Have you ever wanted to make a VR game with the most advanced features the whole video game industry has to offer for free? Oculus has just released a bunch of SDKs for Unreal Engine, which just so happens to be both the most advanced game engine in the world and free to use. So pack your zins and strap in because this ain't your mama's tutorial, alright? Fired up, let's go. I think this zin is making my gums bleed. Don't do nicotine kits. Alright, let's so the first thing you're gonna want to do is download Unreal Engine. And there will be links to everything in the description. But basically you just press download and then install Epic Games Launcher. You go into the Epic Games Launcher, press Unreal Engine down here, go into library, engine versions, add, and then press install. There's plenty of videos on YouTube teaching how to do this, so if you need a more detailed instruction on that part, then just look it up. We got a tight deadline here, can't waste time, we're gonna move, 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 let's go. So you're gonna wanna download the Interaction SDK from the developersmeta.com website. There'll be a link to it down below. Basically, you're gonna wanna press download. And then as it's downloading, you're gonna wanna go into the folder in which your engine is installed to. So it's gonna look something like this. You're just gonna see UE 5. whatever version you got. It's gotta be 5.4 if you want the interaction to work. So probably should have mentioned that. And then you're gonna go to engine, plugins. And if you don't already have one, then you're gonna create a marketplace folder. And then copy that directly. And then go into your downloads folder and then find this file right here. Meta XR interaction zip extract files and then you're just going to paste that directory press ok next thing you're going to want to download is the meta xr there's some great videos already online for you to watch on how to do that i recommend gdxr follow a lot of his content and subscribe to his patreon because why not if you got the money to spare first step you're going to want to open up the unreal editor and then you're gonna wanna go to games and then virtual reality. And then you can choose whatever name you want. I'm just gonna do tutorial and track him. You can name it boobies, whatever you want. You can add starter content if you want, it's up to you. It doesn't really make much of a difference. And then create. Now is where the magic begins. Now we're going to go into plugins and we're going to search for meta. We're going to enable meta XR and meta interaction SDK. It's experimental, it's going to tell you that we don't care. And then you restart your editor. And now here we are. So, first step, let's create a new folder. I'm just going to call it meta. So, first step, we create a game mode base blueprint class. Name it whatever you want, I'm just gonna name it Meta Game Mode Base. And as well as as well as font class. I'm just gonna name it Meta Font. And then we go into our world settings right here on the right. And we change our game mode into the meta game mode base. And then we go into the get get the go into the meta game mode base and change the font and change your default font to meta font, whatever you name it. Compile, save. So now basically everything that we need to have the robust hand system is already in the engine. Meta already went and did all the work and connected all the wires. We just need to go into the blueprint and tell it to listen to the meta thing. I'm not a programmer, all right? Fuck up. So we go into the meta pond. Basically all we need to do now is add a right hand, a left hand, and your eyes. So let's add our right and left hands, which will be motion controllers. add our right and left motion controllers as well as 
as well as a VR camera. And now we want to go into the motion controllers and tell it to listen to the meta SDK that we just installed. So click on your left motion controller and add in an ISDK and rig. And you want to make sure that it's parented to the motion controller and make sure the left one is in the left one and the right one is in the right one. And we can also add a controller as well. So ISDK controller rig. And now do the same thing for the right hand. And that's basically it. We're basically done. All we got to do now is go here, change the right motion controller to right, and the left one should already be left. Compile and save. Now we do need to add a little bit of logic to get it started. So, so the first thing we need to do is set the tracking origin. And that's just going to tell us where we are in the world. But we don't want to just go ahead from the event begin play. We want to create a branch. add in a condition that says is head mounted display enabled. So what this is saying is that if your head mounted display is enabled, then we're going to go ahead and set the tracking origin. If not, then we won't do it. We want to set the origin to local floor. Now what we need to do is set the mapping inputs, which basically means when the computer receives this signal, that means trigger. When the computer receives this signal, that means A button giving a context to all the inputs. So it's pretty simple to do that too. What you want to do is get the player controller. And then we go in and get the enhanced input local player subsystem. And then add mapping context. And then we plug the execution pin now we want to go into the mapping context and select the hand inputs and then duplicate this, connect the execution pin and also add in the controller inputs. Compile. All right. And you want to also connect the target to this node right here. And then you compile and it should be okay. And now that's basically it for the pawn. But the things that you interact with also need to have interactable components in their blueprint if you want to interact with them. For example, let's create an interactable item. Create an active blueprint, interactable. Go into the blueprint, add in any mesh that you want. Can do static mesh. Choose anything. I'm just gonna do this cube here. And I got your mesh. And now if you want this cube to be grabbable by the hands that you just set up, all you need to do is go into add and then grabbable ISDK grabbable component. And that's literally it. Oh, and you want to set your mesh to be the scene root, otherwise the physics will not work. But yeah, toggle, simulate physics, save, compile, and now we can actually add this into our game here. So let's put our headset on and test this out. Whoa. So if you go to VR preview, I hope you guys can fucking and see this. Uh, you see I already have these hands fully set up. It's fully tracking my hands. Now, the only thing is we don't have movement set up yet. That's gonna be in a later video. So make sure to set up your player start right in front of the interactable object. So just move this forward a little bit. 
and the clock where I sit on. Just go a little bit back so I can just move back and then reset. I've already been in the here we are. Alright, and this is our interactable object. We can now grab it by just grabbing with our hand. You see? I'm literally just grabbing with my hand and it's grabbing it and I can fucking throw it. I can do a lot of shit. And now you can only throw it if you enable physics and if the object is a scenery. I tested it out and if both those things are not true, it's not gonna work. We see this doesn't have the grabbable component in it, so it's not gonna work, but that one does. And you can also grab it like this by pinching it. And it's fucking... I guess it doesn't interact with other things. It did, and then it doesn't. Oh, while I'm grabbing it, it doesn't, but... Once I let go, it does, okay. And it's pretty freaking robust. Like, this is better than anything I could code, and I set this up in 10 minutes. And we can throw it with more and less strengths. It's dope. And you could add this to any item you want. There's really endless possibilities with this. We're not gonna go too deep into what you can do with it just yet. But you can go into the ISDK gravel and you can generate the events based on when you grab the item, based on when the physics changes, based on all this stuff here. Like we can go into it deeper. For now, I will give you a bonus though. I'm also gonna show you how to create a UI widget, which is super freaking simple. So go into here, user interface, make a widget blueprint, user widget. We go into it, now we're gonna wanna add a canvas. Next, we drag in an image, and let's just set the size. The one that Meta did, it's 800 by 425. And then we set the color and transparency to whatever you want. This is just for testing, so I'm not too worried about it looking crazy, to be honest. Next, we add in a vertical box. Did I misspell vertical? So stupid. And we add it to the canvas panel. And let's set size X to 800 and size Y to 4.5. That looks weird. Anyways, just move on. Next, let's add some text and drag it onto the vertical box. And you can type whatever you want. Let's add 30 padding, make it centered. And then you can set the text whatever you want. I'm gonna set it to this. Next, drag a button into the vertical box. Select it. Set the padding to 20. We're gonna want to set different colors for normal, hovered, and pressed. You don't have to think too hard about it. And just make each one a little bit darker as we go down. Set this one here and set this one to here. Okay, you just wanna make them distinct enough that you can see the difference. So we can add a text to the button as well, just to make it a little bit more clear. Let's just say button. All right. Now let's add in a slider as well. And drag it onto the vertical box. Select your slider, go into style, style, I don't know why there's two styles. Go into normal thumb image and change the size to 72 by 72. And then we go down to bar thickness and set that to 72 as well. And let's add 30 padding. And that's looking pretty good. Just kidding, it looks like shit, but this is just to demonstrate how easy it is to make an interactable UI. And let's just move it to the center here. Yeah, that looks good. Compile and save. 
Now we're basically done. We almost have a fully interactable UI. We just need to add an interactable widget component. So next we gotta go in and add a interactable widget right up here in the left. And as we can see, it's right here in the world. So we wanna select the interactable widget, go to the details panel, select drop the widget component, and then widget class, we want to select the widget that we just made. So in my case, it's meta UI. And now there it is. There's our widget that we just made in the world. It's a little small. And the colors are a little bit off. So let's set the draw size to 800 by 425. And let's set the scale to Let's times it by 10, 0 0.2. Ah, that's a little big. 0 0.08. That's better. Okay. Now drop down the rounded box material and and check use rounded box material. And then we want to make it transparent and two-sided. Now again, this is just I'm making this as fast as possible just to showcase what you can do if you want a more detailed Unreal Engine widget tutorial. I can make one, but there's already a lot of good ones out there, so you can just watch one of those. So now you want to type interactable and set the configuration asset to this one. It's the only one that should be there. And that's literally it. You press save, and now you should be able to use it. So let's position this in a better place. Let's hop right into the VR and test it out. So if we press play, give it a sec for our hands to register. All right, you see when we press the button, it interacts. The slider, fuck, I should have changed the color to the slider, but can you guys see that? It's interacting with my hand. Okay, I definitely fucked up. <laughs> The design for the UI, but you can see it's fully working here. And this was in like what five minutes? We set this up in like 15 minutes to be fair, but look at this. And you can make this look as pretty as you want, you can make it look as good as you want. I recommend that you check out the documentation on the actual quest website, it goes into a lot more detail. What was that? Oh shit, we can actually... We can't even do the pinch, I didn't even know that. I recommend that you go into the actual quest documentation and read it line by line, there will be a link to that as well. But this is just to show you how quickly you can get this set up and you can take it further. And I'm going to be adding this into my VR game and so please follow to see how the development of that is going. It's going to be the best VR game ever made and I'm going to be posting my progress on YouTube. So please follow me to see how that's going to be going because it's going to be fucking dope. So you don't want to miss out. And I'm going to be posting tutorials as I come across cool stuff like this. And yeah, I'm just excited about the future of this industry because we're the first guys to be in on it. Everyone thinks we're dumb. Well, in about 20 years, all of our kids are going to be playing VR and watching movies in VR. And we were the first ones to get into it. so be excited too thank you so much for watching this video i really appreciate it please please consider liking and subscribing and thanks for following along and i'll see you on the next one